Hey, more people come in, but I guess we'll just we'll just talk talking. The beginning is kind of a slow ascent. So, okay, project meeting. Next slide. Uh, did you do these things? This is a letter, meaning, did you sign up for the balloons mailing list? Who raised their hand if you did? Raise your hand if you didn't. For shame. For shame. Uh, yeah, so sign up for the balloons mailing list because I've been blasting all the balloons emails to both balloon list and general, SI general, because a lot of people haven't signed up for the balloons list yet. But after today, I will no longer send anything to SI general, so if you're not on the balloons mailing list, you will not see it. So, so sign up. Yeah, make sure you're on the balloons mailing list, or else you'll miss a lot of stuff. Next, that's a uh, clipboard. <laughs> Did you fill out my forms? Who filled out all three forms? Raise your hand. Ah, mixed, a mixed reaction. Okay, who didn't fill out all three forms? Or shame. Okay. Uh, basically, if you haven't received these three forms, um, you can email me. I'll send another email after this meeting, like a debrief, uh, with links to uh, the forms. There's a form with contact information, so we know how to contact you. There's a form uh, for project involvement, meaning doing this. And there's a form for launch attendance if you usually go on the launch. So we need all that information, so fill out the forms. I mean, like launch information ASAP, because like the like figure out the cars and like book rentals according to that, so please do that as soon as possible. Net Slack. Who signed up on Slack? I know most people have it. Oh, that's pretty good. Okay, cool. So, um, yeah, Slack is where we try to communicate. I know a lot of people who signed up recently did, have not been talking on Slack, which is fine because you guys start getting started with Slack, but um, that's where a lot of communication will happen. So if you want to talk this week about your project, about any of this needing help, uh, we'll be on Slack like all the time. So if you go on the Balloons channel on Slack and ask questions, you'll get answers. So these are three things you need to make sure you do. Sign up for the Balloons mailing list, fill out the forms, go Slack. Next, launch attendance. These are the people who currently signed up to go on the launch. If your name isn't here, there currently is not a seat in the car for you. But that can change. So, wait, shit, my bad. I was already there, yeah. So if your name isn't here, you're not designated to coming launch, uh, but you can still come, all you have to do is fill out the form. We'll talk a little bit more about that in like a slide or two. Um, but yeah, if you're not even sure if you want to do balloons, you're still going to launch, because a launch is really what like, makes you decide, oh yeah, I should totally do balloons. <laughs> Realistically, right? Like yeah. Launches are like the coolest thing, so. Um, so this is, a, if you want a quick, quick, one more quick look, this is who signed up to go launch now. Uh, this list will definitely be expanded after today, uh, so if you want to sign up to launch, fill out the form. Final attendance. If you do not fill out the launch attendance form by midnight on Monday, there will not be a spot for you to launch. So you have tomorrow midnight to decide whether you can come in the launch that is six days from now. Um, if you fill out the form, you are 100% committing to attendance. If this changes, you can contact us prior to Monday midnight to change your mind. After Monday midnight, if you decide to go, bad things will happen in your near future. I haven't decided what those bad things are yet, which only makes it worse. Um, but there will probably be some kind of form of balloon penalty, I don't know because we spend hundreds of dollars booking cars, and if it turns out we don't need a car, uh, then we just have like an extra car that we spend like $110 on, which is not cool. Uh, so we fill out the form, we're hoping you're committing 100%, and if you, if you want to withdraw, Monday midnight is the time to withdraw. After that, you're locked in, and if you don't come, bad things will happen to you. Uh, so we're gonna talk about projects, but before that, I'll try to go over some launch logistics for those of you who are considering going or already going. Like I said, uh, in the general meeting, we're meeting in front of Duran at 5.30 a.m. sharp. We have 5.45. If you're not here, you will not be with us. Uh, breakfast at McDonald's, where you pay. Uh, lunch at some Vietnamese place, where SSI pays. Uh, bring water and snacks, I guess, if that's your thing. Blue Bonfire. This is tentatively scheduled and might change, but otherwise it would be 9 p.m. on Saturday after the launch. All right, that's the log, fire pit, uh, very big fire. Uh, hot dogs, right? This is what I came out on Google when I searched initiation. <laughs> Unfortunately, there's no, there's, a, there's no sacrificial altar at Lake Log, uh, so you'll not be sacrificed. Uh, yeah. I know it looks really culty, um, but there will be some sort of balloon initiation for those of you who come to the bonfire. Uh, there's a lot of cookies, uh, it seems. So, yeah, that's an exaggerated fire. Very, not very exaggerated. That's like two people tall. So, balloon bonfire's fun. Uh, next. Now we'll start talking about projects. So these are the three teams for the project. Team Gemini, Team Orion, and Team Cassiopeia. And for the record, um, when we pair you guys with the teams, uh, if you guys remember from the general meeting, those of you came, those of you who didn't, uh, then you won't remember it because you never saw it. Uh, basically, each team will also get a mission patch with the members of the teams on the mission patch. 
Uh, it had like a balloon on it, Earth, and like a constellation, I guess. I don't know. I designed them, we'll figure it out. Uh, so that's those. Uh, Gemini will be SSI 23, Orion will be SSI 24, and Cassiopeia will be SSI 25. So we'll have three launches, which is our mission patch. So, uh, also, before we go forward too much, can you raise your hand if you have WhatsApp, like on your phone? Oh my god, nobody has it. Interesting. Okay. Mm. Potentially, if enough people are interested, uh, we might have like a WhatsApp chat for like the balloons team. That makes communication easy. The, we probably might not, as long as people use Slack. Because people use Slack, everything's great. If you don't use Slack, then we have to like, I don't know, pin you down somehow, I guess. So, but hopefully we want to explain Maybe a group meeting. We'll figure it out. Yeah, so also maybe your team might want a WhatsApp. There's a lot less of you. It's not like an official like, I mean, the team's are, like an SSI thing, but like realistically, you're working on your own team. It's kind of like you and 10 friends who get class projects. So like you might want like a WhatsApp group chat kind of thing. I think you guys have Slack in friends. Yeah, who has Slack like on your phones? There's an app that's really good. Hey, that you get. Everyone who's hand is not up right now should go install it like right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And most people in actually have Slack, so they have an account. Okay, so um, how I hope this will work. This is, you've seen this before on the general meeting, but I'll go over it again. Make three groups, Cassiopeia, Gemini, and Orion. Work sessions throughout the week where you can help get help from balloon veterans. You can talk to me the entire time for help, and you meet up with your teams on your own time and get your payload ready. And then we finish and we launch October 10th. That is how this should work. Now, the current teams. Uh, a lot of these people are not here. A lot of these people are here. You also might be here and not be on a team. <laughs> Which, if you're not on a team, it means you didn't fill out the project form, which is what I use to determine if you're going on a team. That's fine. I have, the, I have the list of teams up here. So if you are not listed on a team here, once we break out into teams, I just come up to me, I'll assign you to a random team. But these are the team assignments right now. For Gemini, Orion, and Cassiopeia. So these are the current team assignments. If you're not on a team, like I said, tell me, you'll be assigned to a team. Uh, the roles say here, M-E-E-C-S, those are simply roles that you designated. That does not mean it's what you have to do. For example, if you're CS and you want to delve in EE, -E, please do it. If you're M-E and you realize there's not a lot to do, you do double E. Uh, so basically, these are kind of like your teams right now. And if you decide you want to switch it for team, that's fine. Basically, this was paired off. We paired you together by people you wanted to be with. And then after that, tried to level out the number of M-E, E, and CS uh, oriented people on each team. And that's how these teams came out. Uh, we'll also basically make sure you guys all have your contact information within your team so you guys can talk and stuff. Um, and yes, so these are the current teams. Any questions about this current team so far? Or about team dynamics or anything like that? Anyone not on this list? Are you raising your on the list? So two of you guys? Okay. Oh, three. That's not, that's not bad. Okay, cool, cool. So we'll, uh, we'll add you guys right after this, which is cool. We'll just yeah, don't want to team. Contact us. Yeah. Okay. So work sessions. This is important. So me and Iskander are spending like 12 hours of our time this week just to help you guys um, dedicate sessions. Uh, Monday, October 5th, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. in the Fuse Room. Tuesday, 7.30, 9.30 in Durant 450. Wednesday, 8 to 10 in the Fuse Room. Thursday, 6 to 9 in the Fuse Room. And Friday, 6 to 10 in the Fuse Room. These are literally hours where me and Skinner are just sitting in a room <laughs> waiting for you guys to come and helping you guys. Uh, so these are the, the help sessions. These are on the SI calendar. So yes, you get your picture, but it's also on the calendar if you ever do forget, or like your picture, I don't know, something explodes. Uh, so basically, and, we'll, and here, I have animations, so never mind. Uh, so for those of you guys who don't know, you probably all know, Packard is right there, Duran is right there, very close, it's across the Hewlett. Um, the purpose of these work sessions is three things. Balloon office hours, meaning you guys work within your teams on your own time, but you will inevitably have questions and concerns and need to learn stuff. Uh, that's when you come to these work sessions, and it's like for your time to like talk to me and about anything you have regarding the project. So it's like our office hours. Um, it's a time to you move your team at work. So for example, if you guys, if your team, your team will need to figure out times when you guys want to meet and work on stuff. And you should, and I recommend you meet outside of these work sessions. Like you meet in your dorm, or you meet in some kind of lounge, and you work on a project. Um, but additionally, these are sessions where like we have a room, and you can come with your team and work. So it's an opportunity for you to come and work with your team, having a room to do that in. Um, and lastly, it's learning time because this is going to be a very, very fast accelerated schedule. The point of this is that you can get this done. I mean, we know you can get this done, otherwise we wouldn't make you guys do it in like five days. Uh, but you can get it done, but obviously there will be a kind of a, a quick learning curve. So this is also a chance to come in and like learn more stuff because you'll be learning throughout the week and doing throughout the week. You won't like learn everything today and then just do it throughout the week. You'll probably be learning the entire time. So that's kind of Any questions about uh, work sessions? Awesome. Okay, so now let's start talking about 
what you guys get and stuff. And how are you? It's actually in this box. These are the boxes that each of you will get. This is a Cassiopeia box, a Gemini box, and an Orion box. And in it is all of the essentials that you'll have. So, boom. These are all the things you get. And let's wait for my animation to go through. Okay. So, everyone gets a styrofoam cooler box, top left. Everyone gets a heater pad, which is basically a big resistor. Uh, everyone gets 50 feet of nylon rope. Everyone gets a 2,000 milliamp hour lithium ion battery, uh, lithium polymer. Uh, everyone gets a parachute. Everyone gets an SD breakout board for logging data. Everyone gets a spot GPS so you can find your balloon uh, when it lands. Everyone gets an Arduino to program their balloon. Everyone gets duct tape, zip ties, and jumper cables, and a breadboard. Any questions about any of this? These are all stuff, this is stuff that all the teams are getting. Any questions about any of these? No? Yeah, there shouldn't be. So. Okay, now, things that some of you get and some of you do not get. Uh, we basically split some materials up some between teams. Reason being, we don't have everything to everybody. Uh, that costs money. Um, and also because we wanted to have different teams do different projects and like work on different stuff. So teams have slightly different things. So Gemini has these four objects. Um, so they have a keychain camera for recording the flight, 720p video, a 10 degree of freedom sensor board, which has a gyro, an accelerometer, a pressure sensor, a temperature sensor. Those are, those are cool things. They have a photoresistor. I mean, that's not too exciting. Uh, it's just reads how bright it is. <laughs> I had a pixie camera, that's interesting. The pixie camera is basically a camera that you cannot actually take pictures with, but it plugs into Arduino and it has an accelerated onboard chip for object recognition. So the only thing it's good at is identifying objects. That's basically all it does, uh, but that's useful. So for example, one project we, we want to have teams try have pixie cams, which is not all three teams, um, is space the pixie cam up towards the balloon. It does really great at identifying spheres and circles. So it'll identify the balloon, we want you to input, like, let's say, the radius that it was when it was on the ground, let's say it's six feet wide when we blow it up, and then have the pixie cam analyze the size of the balloon as you ascend. So, for example, it would be six feet when you start. When it pops, it'll probably be like 30 feet wide or something, and have the pixie cam assess that. And then we got some kind of reading of, like, uh, you know, radius by altitude function. And from that, we can also extrapolate pressure inside the balloon. It's actually a very useful project that'll actually be, like, data used on, like, valve valve. It's pretty, pretty cool stuff, and you guys can do it. So that's pretty cool. Orion. Also a keychain camera, exciting. Orion gets a GPS breakout board instead of a sensor board. No sensors, but you get a GPS. Um, Orion also gets a temperature sensor, because otherwise you have no idea how cold the payload is. And a pixie camera for whatever you want or the same thing. Lastly, Cassiopeia will get a GoPro, because uh, we only have one. Uh, a 10 DOF sensor board, just like Gemini. They'll get a microphone sensor and a buzzer and also a photoresistor. Uh, so we're also gonna try and get a photoresistor for Orion. It's not like a hard thing to get, it's like 30 cents. I just only had two yesterday. Uh, and basically, Cassiopeia, the main thing here is like, using the buzzer to emit sound and the microphone to receive sound, we're gonna measure sound perturbation at various altitudes. So see how well sound translates with decreasing density. It was like a fun experiment you can do. Uh, that's Cassiopeia's gonna do. So, you guys get these different boards, sensors, GPS, whatever, but all of you guys have an SD card breakout. The idea is that your main thing uh, will be data logging. So you log all your data, and basically we can look at it on the ground, and then we can see like, you know, data by altitude and stuff like that. And then some of you do experiments, like with Pixie Cam or with microphone and buzzer. Any questions about this stuff? Okay, um, additionally, if for some reason your team's like, oh, I don't want the Pixie Camera, and Cassiopeia's like, I do, uh, you can trade those things, these things, I guess, because uh, it's totally fine. Like, if Orion has a Pixie camera and they're like, we're not going to use this, then it's totally fine for Cassiope to use it if um, Orion doesn't want to. So you guys can like switch them up. Now, task list. These are things that basically you have to do um, just because it's like a basic balloon payload. You have to keep it warm. Um, negative 10, your battery will die. Uh, below that, all your electronics will die. So you need to keep it warm using the heaters. So you use the Arduino to program the heaters to turn on when the temperature drops below zero C, basically. And you guys can do that in creative ways to save battery, which is optimal, or you could just not save battery, which is okay, but uh, not optimal. Um, you'll record a flight using a camera, because you guys all have cameras. Mechanically, you have to string a payload to a balloon, which is not as straightforward as it sounds. Uh, you need to string the payload in a way that it's not just duct taped to the payload. Uh, <laughs> yeah. You gotta like put specially, strategically placed holes in the payload, and like put the string through in a certain way that holds it tightly and like is mechanically secure, uh, but also minimizes holes. 
Um, and then also increases, uh, increases stability because that'll make you uh, make better footage. Additionally, you want an adequate length to go to your balloon because the longer the distance from the payload to the balloon, the more stable the camera. The closer the payload is to the balloon, the more wobble there is from the wind. Uh, but if the string is far down, the string will absorb a lot of the vibrations or the sideways sway of the balloon. So you want to do that. You'll log sensor data uh, if you're Gemini or Cassiopeia and GPS data if you're Orion. You use a pixie cam or track size the balloon if you're Gemini or Orion. Or something else. You guys can do whatever you want with pixie cam. I don't care. That's just an idea. Um, use a photoresistor if you're Gemini or Cassiopeia and Orion will probably get one. I just have one right now. Um, you'll measure sound output by altitude, Cassiopeia. Um, you'll do the parachute deploying mechanism. So we know how to deploy parachutes 100% of the time. We will explicitly not tell you how to do that. So that um, the parachute might plummet into the ground. Uh, should, you, should you not want that to happen, which I would recommend, uh, you have to build your own deployment mechanism. So the main thing for ME will be figuring out how to make sure a parachute deploys. And you can test that pretty well. So for example, obviously it's not an ideal situation, but the idea is a balloon has tension pulling up, the payload has some mass pulling down, right? That's basically the two forces you have. And then you somehow have a parachute that's attached to the payload be deployed when the tension from the balloon dissipates. So at one point the tension of the balloon will like boom, gone. Uh, but keep in mind the balloon still has mass and it'll probably be heavier than your payload. So the balloon will actually start crashing down. So you have to like consider a lot of different things. It's not a straightforward question to answer how to deploy the parachute. But you need to figure out how to do that. And for testing, you can like drop it off roofs or something. Like I know rockets test parachutes by dropping it off roofs, so. <laughs> uh, but that's, that's an important ME thing to do. And in fact, we have a parachute deployment mechanism right now, but maybe there's better ideas and you guys can come up with them. Next is um, um, a list of ideas for stuff you can do, uh, which is stuff that you don't have to do, but these are some ideas we have. Ideally, you should come up with whatever you want to do. Um, so one thing we want to do is string two of your balloons together using 100 feet of rope, because we've never done that before. And these launches are the perfect time to just test new random crap. So uh, string two balloons using 100 foot rope together and see what happens. And we can see them both from each other's cameras, and it might be pretty cool. So whenever two teams want to string the balloons together during the launch, we can make that happen, about 100 feet of rope. A big ME thing, should you choose to accept the challenge, is to build a gimbal for the spot GPS or put heavy weight on the bottom of your payload, with the first one being the one I'd rather you do. The idea is that each of you guys will get a spot GPS. It looks like this. Um, this is your only way of finding out where your payload is, because we have no other way to transmit data with your payload. This little thing will just transmit GPS coordinates to us. It has an 85 degree cone, or 75 degree cone, that has access to satellites. So um, basically if it's on its side, it will access the satellite eventually. If it's on this side, it will access the satellite eventually. If it's facing up, perfect. If facing down, it will never access the satellite. So the point is, we've been lucky, but if your spot GPS, if your payload lands upside down, your spot GPS facing downward, your payload's gone, and it will never find it. So um, it's very critical that your spot faces upward. This can be easily solved uh, for the most part by putting heavy weight in the bottom of your payload because if it lands sideways, um, then the reality is that it'll transmit. If it lands upward, great. If it lands downward with the heavy weight being on top of the payload, aka the bottom of the payload, but it's upside down, then at some point it'll experience some kind of force hopefully and it'll knock to its side and then we get sideways transmission. That's one easy way to fix it. What I recommend you is build a gimbal. Most of you guys probably know what that is, right? Everyone knows what a gimbal is. Just a, like a three axis thing that no matter where you turn it, it's always facing up. Uh, so you can build one of those. There's guides online for literally gimbals for spot GPSs that amateur balloonists use. You can literally make one of those or you can think of your own idea. And you can make them the PRL or you can go out and do your own thing. Uh, so that would be a huge, huge, huge ME thing. And in fact, we don't have a gimbal for balloons. So we can easily lose our balloon. We would love to have a gimbal. Uh, so if you make that, we'll probably use it because we don't have a gimbal. <laughs> so that's gimbal. Any questions about gimbal? No? Okay. Um, if you want, you can do weird stuff like launch gliders. That's what we tried to do last year. We had like a servo that just like went down and a bunch of gliders were like dispensed and they flew away from altitude. Except it didn't work that way. They fell off right away. But ideally, you get to like some altitude, let's say like 80,000 feet, and then you drop like four gliders that say like, <coughs> I don't know, your name and phone number on them, and then you get like weird calls like, oh my god, gliders fell in my yard, where'd it come from? Mm -hmm. And the glider says like it came from this space, like, oh my god. Uh, so you can see like where the gliders go, which is like really cool. It's actually like a, kind of like a, well, I don't know what it's safe enough, but it's, it's cool, I guess. Um, this would be really cool if someone wants to do it, a balloon selfie video. We've never done this before, but if someone wants to like have a big stick come out from the balloon and like film the balloon from like, a selfie perspective, that'd be a pretty cool video to have, because we don't have one of those. 
Ideally, that's probably one of the balloons that's not tied together to the other balloon, because uh, otherwise it might hit that balloon, and like it's like a it's like a sword. So um, <laughs> somebody wants to someone wants to do a balloon selfie video, uh, that'd be really cool. Um, that'd be an awesome like video for that side to have, and it's not too complicated. You have to have a stick. It comes out, holds the camera, points the balloon. Um, the only thing that's taken care of is that the the, the camera does get cold and it'll freeze, and if we don't put anything on it, it'll freeze very quickly. So you need to, you guys know like hand warmers, right? You buy at the store, you like whatever, smack them and they warm up. Put those in the camera probably to keep it alive for like longer than 10 minutes. Awesome balloons on the video. Uh, but this, there's not a lot of ideas that we have. The idea is that you guys come with ideas, so um, come with us some ideas. Mayonnaise is not an idea. Um, yeah, so almost anything is possible. Now, to the point of almost anything is possible is the custom extension slide. We love and encourage you to come up with ideas for what to do on your own balloon and then implement them. That's not too important, but this part is. This might probably would require you to buy stuff. If you want to do that for the purpose of doing something for a balloon, ask me a signature for approval, buy it, then I psych reimburse you. As long as you're okay with paying like 20 bucks to get some materials, I, I, I hope it won't cost you more than that because I'll probably say no. Uh, if you need to buy a few things to make something happen, tell us, and if we think it's worthwhile, we'll let you buy it. And then there's literally a form SI has, you put a picture of your receipt, how much money it costs, and you'll get a check from Stanford in like two weeks. So you'll get reimbursed. And luckily, you're spending like 20 bucks on resources, not 5,000 like Venus could do. Our poor wallets hurt so much. Yeah. So, uh, yes. Now, uh, so I recommend right now, if you guys all break out your phones and just add us to contact, because during this week, realistically, you'll be working a lot, and you will need a lot of help. And we will be here to help you. So you can text us, call us, email us, whatever. Um, for the record, if you guys need help, and your team needs help, and you want to meet up, and it's not like a work session, I will totally just invite you to my dorm, and we can just work on stuff in my room. Like, I'm fine with that. I don't know, Eastern, are you fine with that? I think it will be a little bit difficult. Right, okay. My room's tiny, but... Well, work in the, work yeah. in the we'll line or something. So basically, uh, we'll work out a way for you guys to meet with us and work with us if you need to do that. Uh, it's not going to be a problem. So for reference, um, I live in Toyon, next to Arriaga, and um, it's going to live in Slaw at the end of the road. So we live in two slightly different locations. He might be closer for West Campus people. I'm obviously closer for East Campus people. Um, but so basically, you can go to either one of us. Just text us, call us, and we'll figure something out. The point is, we want to be on call whenever you need help. That was kind of the point of the WhatsApp, but like three, well, three of you have it, so <laughs> um, I guess we'll just do Slack. Uh, but in that case, you should go on Slack a lot, yeah. so that you can just actually get the, app. Yeah, get the app for sure. Because if you don't have the app, you like don't know when stuff happens, and you got to go to your computer, which is fine. But like the app is really helpful. So um, I see people still typing. Give a few more seconds or minutes or whatever. Not seconds. It's a lot. As I see no more phones, I'll continue. Until then, I'll assume you're putting my information, my in. information. Almost there. <laughs> um, but yeah, so also keep in mind, uh, we've already set aside like 14 hours of our time to help you guys. Not that we don't want to help you outside those hours, but we do have other lives outside of SSI, believe it or not. Um, for example, I mean, like we're all doing stuff. He's a graduate student now, pretty much. So he has a lot of graduate classes that are like really hard. And then I like also section lead CS, so like I have to create assignments and stuff. So like we both have a lot of stuff we do outside of SSI, uh, but message us, we'll make ourselves available to the best of them we can, and we'll make it work. So like like I said, is there, like time we need help, I'll like book a toy on lounge, we'll work on toy on, like that's fine for me. So okay, I think everyone's got information, we'll move on. Uh, so quick question before we continue, uh, and I'll, I'll elaborate a little bit before on that, before I ask this question, is that we currently have four drivers, uh, right now that's enough for the people signed up for the launch, but a lot of you in this room even aren't signed up for the launch, and you probably will sign up for the launch. So basically, we will probably be one or two drivers short uh, of where we are now. The way this would work is you need to have your own personal insurance if you're under 21, like your own car insurance, if you drove a car back home, you have personal insurance. Um, there's an enterprise on campus, in the west part of campus, that rents to 18 year olds, and 19 year olds, and 20 year olds if you're a Stanford student. You bring them your insurance, uh, so basically it would be on your insurance if you crash the car, uh, but you bring them your insurance and they'll rent you a car at a slightly higher rate, and then basically you'll rent the car for us for the weekend, it'll be $110, then after that I say we'll reimburse you. So if you're willing to drive basically, you would sign up as a driver, you rent a car from Enterprise, use your insurance, you drive for us, I say will reimburse you. If you happen to be over 21, which is anybody here over 21? You are? Okay, cool. So in that case, you can drive from Hertz which instead of $110, like $50, which is awesome. Uh, so if you want to drive, that's a cool thing. 
Uh, so anybody here, like, you don't have to say if you're going to drive or not yet, but would you be possibly interested in that idea? Would anybody be interested in driving? Yes? Okay, cool. So we might, we might have to, you know, so, okay. Do you have any other questions right now? For uh, any of the launch logistics, team logistics, anything like that? No? 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 Okay. Uh, also, tonight is SSI dinner, as is every Sunday, 6 p.m. at Treehouse. So you should come for the SSI dinner. Uh, you get free burritos and pizza and salad and soda. Um, and there's a bunch of SSI people there. In fact, uh, there's always 20 people at least there, so we should have more. And then after the dinner at 7 is the Fosh Social. I don't really know what that entails. I think it's ice cream or something. Sorbet, I don't know. Uh, so that's happening tonight. Come to that. Yes. Okay, so now that we're good with that, we're going to break into teams. And basically, the idea behind this will be like, we're going to try and, um, so basically, within the teams, you guys have to like, you know, meet each other and know who you're working with. Uh, and then basically, each other know who you're working with. Um, you can start exchanging contact information thinking about how you want to approach this. Each team also needs to designate a team captain. So you guys will figure that out within your teams. The reason for that is I need to know who to give the box to. So one person will be in charge of the box. If you lose the box, you owe me $1,000. So the team captain does not come as a light responsibility. But don't lose the box, then it's all easy. Um, because the boxes have a lot of things. Like the spot GPS, looks lame, is $300. So <laughs> GoPro, $300. Um, other stuff in the box, $100. So, uh, we need somebody to entrust with this stuff, uh, so you can work on, on it outside of our hours. So that's it's critical that you work on this outside of like our work session hours, which is why we're giving you this stuff to keep, but you gotta be responsible for taking care of it, uh, which we trust you will be, which you have a, a person on each team is responsible for that. Uh, so we'll do that, and then we're gonna try and start introducing you guys to like some stuff. So for example, I think what we're gonna do is, uh, you wanna be in here and introduce Arduino, and then I'll talk to the ME people about some blue and ME stuff. Yeah, that sounds good. Do that. You can get my laptop. Yeah. Okay, cool. So we're probably going to do that. Uh, there'll be some electronics in here. I'll talk ME stuff with ME people. Real good that won't last too long. So ME people can come back here and look at E stuff uh, because balloons are probably 60-40 or 70-30 um, EECS. There's a lot of E. There's a lot of cool ME stuff you can do, um, but it's not like required ME stuff. So like, I'll tell you guys about parachute deployment, uh, string up your payload, uh, some thermal insulation stuff. After that, ME stuff comes up like what you want to do creatively. Uh, so I don't know what that is, but you guys can talk to me about that. Um, otherwise, Iskander will be in here talking about Arduino, introducing you guys to that, and basically what you have to do. Uh, so, yeah. And also, for those of you who are familiar with the E stuff, breadboards are like the prototyping. Uh, but you guys will fly breadboards, or we're not going to solder anything. Just because it's hard to access um, a room. Yeah, I mean, we're not like a lab space for you guys yet. Yeah. So. So eventually we'll, we'll have our space for you where we can solder it. Actually, SSI is the main room, Mission Control, Duran 390. Um, we can solder in there, but it's currently locked. So until it's locked, we're using breadboards and like hot gluing them down, I guess. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Work. So um, in that case, double E. Uh, oh, actually, no, first breaking the teams. So um, what are the, how about this? Uh, let's see. Cassiopeia and. Gemini will come with me to the third floor. Orion will stay in this room. In the third floor, I'll break Gemini and Cassiopeia up into two rooms. You guys will talk to me. I'll facilitate in both rooms. And in Cassiopeia, wait, Orion stays here. And you guys will talk. And then it's going to facilitate. And then we'll reconvene in like 10 minutes. Sound good? Yeah, sounds so good. if I said Gemini or Cassiopeia, come with me. Orion, stay here. Huh? Yeah, I'll bring up the list. That's a good idea. Because a lot of you guys don't remember what teams you're on. Um, if you're not on a team, come to me right now. I'll assign you to one, and then you guys can disperse. Yeah, come sign up with the team before you go. Yeah. What's up? All right. Hey, what's your name? Adrian. Adrian. Uh, so what are you interested in? What are you interested in? CS, ME, or WD? Okay, sure. I'll put you on the right. What's your name? Adrian. Yeah. And last one, uh, yeah. TR. Okay, you guys get to know each other. I just like go on prompt to go out, I think. <laughs> so, okay. okay. Sign up the right. forms so tonight. Yeah, so I know you're coming. Okay. I will run. I would prefer that you run. Just like this. You can't miss all the energy. No, I'm going to Sensors? Yeah. Okay. I'll put you on uh, Gemini. Okay. 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 All right. So, Adrian. T I. T I. So, T I. 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 T I.
Yeah. 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 So yeah. 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 Yeah, what do you guys want to see? Obviously, like, Facebook? Also, Sunday morning, I would say. Yeah, okay. yeah, so, you know, third floor. Yeah. All right, we're, so let's put the C. Uh, I don't know how to do that. What the fuck is C? I don't like That's good, because we're low on E. So, so let me put you on. In case you someone want to, like, uh, it sounds serious. What's your name? Last name? Awesome. Uh, I don't feel that we're four. It's fine. I just fell out tonight. I know you're Oscar, man. Okay, uh, yeah, let's go down to the floor. Yeah, so you guys just meet each other, talk, figure out a team captain, and meet each other, get to know each other. I love to keep this thing. I've got a hot glue guy in my room. Oh, oh, okay. Well, I mean, I don't know if you want to call me like storage man. I'm not sure if you want to call me like storage Actually, it's heavy hot glue gunner. The other one for you, I think. But that way, can make it still right? Yeah, this I am. Okay, that gets. What's your name? I'm Brian. Um, we have like the candy, we have like the crappy candy. Yeah, which one is the chain? Oh, we're teaching, I mean, at the next channel. Does anyone know how the other GPS works, like the one we have that the others don't? There is a connect like to our tuna so they can get like vertical speed, horizontal speed, and, like acceleration um, and position. We just get like readings on like an online map. Right, so, so we can't really use it ourselves. But does it need to be pointed in a certain direction? Um, ours should be pointed up. I used the spot GPS before. Well, not the spot GPS, but the ours. Oh, we have the real GPS, so that's better. Yeah. Um, yes. But I used a spot GPS before, I had to point it down and it still worked. So. It's stuck in the mud. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you guys circle right. Okay. You know, yeah. Should you guys get to meet? Talk to each other? Yeah. Yeah. 